Last year, I made a video on the Fixed Dress One and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great alternate way of doing handheld gaming on the go. It was super comfortable. I really fell in love with it and was excited to use it for a lot more gaming up ahead. And then the Switch OLED came out, which I love the Switch OLED and was fantastic, but we ran into a very particular issue. The Switch OLED being a little wider than the regular Switch ends up making it not compatible with any kind of Switch accessories that require, you know, slotting the system into it, the Fixed Dress One included. Well, fast forward a year later, and Fixture has released the S2, which is an updated model design that is made for the Switch OLED in mind. It's just a little wider, along with having a couple other little updates that does make for a better experience. Uh, full disclosure, they did actually send one out for me to try out, and not only did they send one out, the S2 they sent actually had my little channel banner, which honestly I've actually been thinking of updating and changing sometime soon, but it is really cool they took the time to do that, and it's just a nice little touch. So I want to go over how to use this thing, what I like about it, what dangers you still have to keep in mind about using it, as well as maybe some slightly expanded uses for it. First off, the basics of this thing, pretty simple. It's basically a larger, better version of what you've seen for phone clips for game controllers, where you're able to attach it around a Switch Pro controller's body and then slot the tablet of the Switch into the top part. What makes this really nice though is that instead of the Switch trying to sit on top of the controller where you can get this awkward weight where it kind of pulls down in front of you, uh, you can actually adjust the neck of it so that the Switch tablet is sitting right above the controller itself, which allows for much more balanced weight and an overall much, much more comfortable experience playing on the go. Now, while I like the ergonomics of how the original S1 worked out, it did have some problems that I felt were important to mention, some of which have been fixed and addressed on the S2. And this mostly had to do with marking up the products that you're using. It was very easy to accidentally scratch up your Switch Pro Controller. There were some ways to try and be careful about it and not cause it to happen as often, but regular use was definitely going to make it an inevitability. While the main Switch tablet itself wouldn't get any actual scratches, but the plastic that was used as part of the kind of securing grip on the S1 would mark up the back a little bit, leaving these noticeable streaks. Stuff that, personally for me, doesn't really bother. Uh, at the end of the day, I am using these systems to play and use them on the go. Marks and such are things that are just going to happen with time, and I'm fine with that, but I absolutely understand why it's not something that everyone else would want to deal with. And the S2 has addressed one of these things. Controller scratching is absolutely still a thing, although it is, again, kind of avoidable if you're careful with it. Uh, I think one of the big things is that oftentimes people are tempted to try and slot the controller in by putting the controller in the bottom cradle and then slide the top in. That's actually you're gonna get a lot of easy scratches. Well, it seems like you'd get easier scratches by having the bottom part slide over. Uh, that's actually safer. And I think a large part of that has to do with the type of plastic that's on that part of the Switch Pro controller. The top of it is very glossy, the bottom is matte, and the match just isn't really scratching up the same way that the gloss does when it's rubbed against this plastic. The Switch tablet part though, and arguably the one of the two that you would want to see fixed sooner, uh, looks a lot better. And I think this is for two main reasons. One, the plastic that the Switch OLED is made out of is just simply different. It's a better plastic than what you have on the traditional Switch bodies. And so I think it's just more resistant to that kind of marking up and it's not something that's going to happen as easily. But two, on fixtures side of things, uh, they actually changed the kind of plastic that was used for adding resistance and keeping the Switch locked in place. They used to have these two little tiny plastic knobs that came out a little bit and those the things that created a very noticeable white streak on the back of a regular Switch. Uh, whereas on this one, they are much larger black pads that, you know, when I very first slide down, I feel like I kind of see a light little bit of something, but then it just rubs off super easily. Uh, definitely does not leave the kind of noticeable marks that the previous design did. Something else that's really important to point out with the setup is that this grip is designed specifically to not only work with the Switch OLED, but also to work with a Switch Pro controller. The way the kind of claw grip design for wrapping around the controller works is it's shaped specifically to go with that controller. Now you don't have to actually use a Switch Pro controller. That's just the one where you're gonna really get the actual nice tight fit and the balance is going to work accordingly. Fixture does have their own Pro Controller option they sell, which looks to be just using the same kind of base mold and design as the official Switch Pro Controller, so it fits the same, but they're selling it at a lower price. Uh, but I have also tried out a couple of the other wireless controllers I have around, and some of them you can kind of get to work more or less. Uh, in particular, the Ipidu Ultimate, which is currently my favorite go-to for the Switch, does work with this setup. However, it's not going to be as tight of a proper fit as the Switch Pro Controller is. There's gonna be a little bit of looseness and jingle to it, not to the point where it's going to pop off the controller and then your tablet goes falling down and you break your Switch and it's a nightmare scenario, but because it's not as tight of a grip depending on you know how you're moving and playing on the system, it's not gonna be as good of a fit. I think it works fine if you just want to use this while sitting down somewhere and hanging out, but if you're trying to play the system literally 
literally on the go, like walking and playing, uh, definitely having the more secure grip with a Pro Controller is probably the better way to go. One other feature that Fixture does push about these things that was handy on the original S1 model, but I don't really care as much for the S2, is the fact that not only can you use it as a controller grip, but you can also use it as a standalone switch stand as well. Uh, with the original switches where I absolutely hated the kickstand, I thought this was a really neat, nice feature. With the OLED, not really as big of a deal. The OLED kickstand works great. Uh, not really a thing that I feel like I have to replace. Uh, if you like the idea of having the switch set up a little higher and not be directly on a table, but you know, standing up a little bit. That's a benefit that this does have to offer over using the built-in kickstand, but it's just not quite as valuable of a feature as it was on the regular Switch. Nice to have, just not quite as meaningful. Really the big debate with this thing is whether or not it's worth going this route or one of the, honestly, several other ways that you can make the Switch more comfortable and handheld. I mean, ultimately that's the main problem that a lot of these products are trying to solve, right? Is the fact that using the regular Switch in handheld mode, while perfectly viable and works, can end up being a little bit of a hand cramp over time, especially if you're older and have larger hands. It's just that flat body design doesn't really work for long periods of gaming. That's why we have Switch grips. That's why we have alternative larger Joy-Cons and that's why Fixture has made this grip so that you can use a Pro Controller instead. And when you're coming from that angle, I think there's a couple of interesting ways to compare this against some of those other options. Uh, first off, price-wise, they all end up kind of working out around the same place. I mean, when you're talking about some of the higher quality grips out there, those can go for 45 bucks, like the Satisfied Grip. Though there are some more affordable ones out there, like the ones from Skull & Co. Uh, and then larger Joy-Cons, you have stuff like Hori's Split Pad Pro, which also goes for 50 bucks, or the very popular off-brand option that Binbok has, where they can also be used wirelessly, and that also goes for, again, 50 bucks. So price-wise, all of these kind of sit in the same general territory. Uh, the really unique and interesting upsell about this one is the emphasis on using a Pro Controller. You know, in the past when I've talked about some of these more comfortable options being compared against each other, oftentimes the focus was grip versus larger Joy-Cons. And the trade-offs for there are things like, well, if you're using a grip, you still are using official Joy-Cons on the system, so you're able to make use of the NFC reader. You still have access to things like HD Rumble, although it's not really feeling quite the same coming through grip as it does when you're holding it directly. When compared to something like the Binbox, which are using, you know, Rumble, but not really the same kind of refined form, or the Split Pet Pro, which doesn't have Rumble at all. Meanwhile, using those larger controllers instead of a grip come with their own trade-off subsides, like having bigger thumbsticks to use for more precise control, having bigger buttons to work with that might be more comfortable to use, uh, or even having some of their own additional special features like an additional remappable button on the back of them. The fixture, meanwhile, comes in with a really interesting midpoint across these things, because you're getting all the benefits that a Pro Controller come with, including things like HD Rumble, or you could, again, use another similar controller that fits well enough, like the 8 Ultimate, where you're getting some of those alternate benefits, like the back buttons. If the goal is purely having a functional controller that is comfortable, I actually really like the way the fixture works out, because at the end of the day, using a class controller, is just better. I like handheld designs and interfaces, and when it's a unibody approach like the Switch Lite, I like it a lot more. Uh, but with the Switch, I found myself just with this option of using a controller in this grip approach, it ends up working out really nicely. The only time where it's a really big problem compared to those other choices is motion controls. For those games that have motion controls and you like using them, uh, whether that's for finding your bow aiming in Legend of Zelda, or you're playing Splatoon and you like using motion controls for that, uh, the fixture doesn't really work out quite as well because now you're shifting the entire body in a way that just feels a little less steady and certain compared to holding the system in its more natural body design. Really, all of these options have their individual strengths, and I think they're all great alternatives to just relying on the regular Switch body itself. Since this video is focused on the fixture, though, I will highlight and emphasize that for that one. If you're a big fan of Pro Controller, if you've just never really cared for using Joy-Cons or any kind of, you know, more handheld designed system, but you do want a way to play on the go and make use of a traditional controller, the fixture is absolutely one of the best options out there. Just keep in mind that you might mark up the Pro Controller a little bit, maybe don't use a special edition one or one that you're particularly attached to, just to try to avoid that damage, though the Switch itself in this case is much more safe than it was in the old S1 handle. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button to let me know, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you guys later.